Welcome to Liberty Minded. I'm Stephanie Edmonds, creator of Teaching Liberty and your host. And today I'm here with Luke Olivier. He is a artist, poet, and songwriter from New York, and he is a fellow free thinker. What's going on, Luke? Peace, peace, peace. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Seems like we got a better connection going on this right. time. So I'm super like excited. Yeah. Um, why don't you let the people know a little bit, you know, more about who you are and your journey in this life? Uh, I am Luke Olivier. I am a genre bending poet, artist and songwriter, uh, free thinker. Uh, I have a movement called Spoken Word and Chill, which is using our platform to be a safe space and uh, trailblaze uh, the spoken word genre into mainstream culture. A lot of people forget that the acronym for rap is rhythm and poetry. So we want to bring that back, um, you know, to make sure people remember that. And, and, and our platform is a safe space. It's a vibrant, safe space. And, and we want to get that into uh, the mainstream culture. So, yeah, that's me. Yeah. When you say safe space, you know, sometimes I get some of these weird, like, oh, snowflakey feelings. But I actually did yeah. a word um, in college, like end of high school into college. And that's what I remember it as being a safe space, mm. but not in this way where it's like, oh, my God, you have to worry about what you're going to say to offend somebody. No, safe in, as you could say anything and we would find a way to understand and connect and unpack that uh we are you know how sports teams they get together in a huddle and they say like whatever their cheer is mm -hmm. our our cheer was no shame so like at mm -hmm. the beginning end of a session we would all come together and that's what we would we would like is talk and then we'd go no shame like super loud i love that, I love that. yeah I love that. even even in our space um we try to make sure I always say like public speaking is the number one fear in the world. So we have like really seasoned vets, like artists and poets that come and perform and they're usually our feature artists. But we also have in our open mic segment, a lot of people who are terrified of public speaking um, and they come up and they'll be like, yo, this is my first time ever performing publicly. You know, they're nervous, they're shaking, but they, you know, some end up doing well, some, you know, end up messing up, but Regardless of, I always like, I don't want poetry in my space to ever be like this snappy Love Jones thing where I was like, if you want to cheer, you can cheer. If you want to clap, you can clap for somebody. You're not limited to just snapping. Love on anybody that comes up here. And it's an unfiltered safe space, obviously with respect, but we want people to be able to say what you want in your creative way without feeling like, what toes am I going to step on? So um, mm. I am a very unfiltered person. Um, you know, I talk very colored, so I, I try my best to make sure that whoever is in my space knows they can be that as well. So, yeah. We're definitely on the same page with that one. Yeah. So I'm definitely, <laughs> you know, I like to have fun. I like to joke around. You know, we could be serious when need be, but, For you sure. know, other than that, let's have a good time. Let's express ourselves. Yeah. And that's definitely, you know, on um, what we're all about, teaching liberty, you know, open-minded. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess you know, you say you put on events and you create these spaces. How has these past two, I guess we're up to almost two and a half years, which I guess yeah. it was in March. So like, yeah, two in three months, four yeah. months, About you know, how did that impact what you were doing in the spaces you were creating? How did you adjust and how are you continuing to navigate? Uh, it's been uh, the past two years, 2020 and 2021, I've definitely been, um, it's been challenging uh, to say the least uh because you know obviously with the being in new york specifically um and, and the mandates and what that's been um you know i've been very forward about you know when you say safe space also in who i am personally i want to make sure you know we have people that are able to come to our events and not feel like man i gotta be vaccinated um or unvaccinated that's the main question whenever We've tried to have the events. It's been like, yo, can I come? And I'm not vaccinated. So any venue that I've partnered up with personally, it's been challenging to find spaces and venues that are like, hey, like we don't, you know, we're not going to um, mandate that you need anything to come in here. Some, you know, they, they don't want their business to be shut down or, or, or ticketed. So a lot of venues have not been as open, but I've always been intentional about making sure that we partner up with spaces 
and venues that do allow um, just people to choose whatever they want, you know, and to come in and to come into an event and it not be a political thing. Um, and it's been challenging. There's been hurdles, but I have found those spaces. And now we are in 2022 and, you know, it, New York is basically open. But in that 2021 year, it was challenging. We didn't have an event for about a year, you know, and then when we finally did have an event that was challenging to find those venues um, and you had to navigate and find, I had to find other ways, you know, I wasn't getting booked it's the same because things were shut down. So you had to find ways to navigate around it. But I think the most eye opening thing has been seeing what venues that have become my tribe, because the venues that said in 2020 and 21, listen, we're not here to do, you know, make this a political thing. Those are the venues that I've stayed with um, even now in 2022. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I definitely see a lot of that. On the one hand, we can see a lot of this darkness, a lot of these things mm -hmm. that we're like, uh, not so sure about. But on the other hand, you know, we are finding our people. We're seeing Absolutely. Absolutely. true colors. And, you know, I, I don't say that as a judgment on people. I try, I really try not to judge people because I understand Likewise. that, you know, they're, a lot of times they're making decisions using the same processes that I am. They're just coming to different conclusions, right? They're putting their faith in different things than I'm putting my faith in. So it's not a judgment, but you know, you have to go with that energy that's, that's uplifting you. And we, again, it's not to try to exclude people. I always want to invite people in, but we have to find our people. We have to find those spaces and we yeah. have to make sure that that's the ecosystem we're building, right? We yeah. have to put our money and invest into that. Mm -hmm. I agree fully. And, and, and that's, I think for me, one of the things I kind of recognize is when you are finding your tribe, I was afraid of like, man, I don't want to turn people off when I post this on my spoken word and chill page. Like, Hey, and it's just, and, and it's so crazy how fast you can turn people off by just saying, hey, in the middle of like people forget, but I'm never going to forget what happened 2020, 2020, okay. 2020. You know, you're not too. But just how many people were turned off at us saying, if you're vaccinated, I don't care. If you are, I don't care. You know, it was mm. just one of those things. Be, you choose what you want, but it's at your own discretion. And I can't believe that you would say, they have to get vaccinated. I don't feel safe. Is it? And it was just saying like, wow, just telling people, we just posted on our page and I had to use my own like judgment, you know, it's with my team, like we're going to turn people off, but I have to be okay with being myself. So I was like, we just posted on our page very openly um, and gracefully and just saying, listen, you can come to, cause we're getting so many DMs saying, if I'm not vaccinated, can I come in? And I was like, you know, let's just handle this by posting it. If you, you know, whoever is coming to our events, if you're unvaccinated, it's fine. If you are vaccinated, it's still fine. You know, we welcome you into our yeah. space with love. And, and, and that's what it was. Some people were turned off. Some people were just really scared because they felt like if they were in a space or venue um, around people that were unvaccinated, they'd get sick. And, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. But uh, we, we handled it with, um, with, with grace. I, I just feel like same thing as you. I allow people to be themselves and make their own decisions, but I can't force people I can't make my artistic safe space become this health political thing. So that was one of the right. things we strayed away from. Um, and and we're it's very by. interesting, right? Because it's like, I don't, I, on the one hand, you know, like there should be a political spaces, but Absolutely. it's like we made everything political. So when you're just trying to be normal and live th how things are normally, it's like all of a sudden they're making you seem like you're making a political statement as some radical. Yeah. But you're yeah. But yeah. like it's really the middle ground that I yeah. feel and I could be wrong, right? You know, I'm very open to I, I'm trying to stay humble to the fact that, but I really do feel like we are kind of, you know, preaching and living here on this middle ground. And because both sides are like out so far from that middle ground, yeah, yeah. we do seem super radical for being in the middle yeah, ground. Sure. The middle. But it's not political to say that people who are, regardless of your medical status, you can be here. It's political when you start segregating people. That's the political thing to do. Yeah. So I really do think that we just have to start standing firm on our beliefs on on and, and not 
you know, kowtowing and saying, no, this isn't political. This is me just living my normal life. No, I'm not going to censor myself. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know what? I am an anti-masker. That's my latest project. Um, I am an anti-masker. Just trying to reclaim these terms that they've used as slurs, yeah. right? To make us seem radical. Like, sure, you want... I am radically moderate, if that's how you want to go. Mm. Anti-masker is a super moderate position. So showing your face is normal, you right. know? Right, right. I agree. But a lot of people, it just goes to the root of it. A lot of people don't want to, um, they don't want to think for themselves. Um, and, and they do think, they think for themselves, but this independent thinking, people follow mainstream narratives very easily so when you take this the stance of going against and not even going against just choosing to think for yourself and your thought process is opposite of propaganda it's it's the least it's the road taking the least so people are a bit it, it's almost like I, i'm gonna go a bit off but go come around mm -hmm. did you see the movie free god free god free guy Free With guy. No, you know, I'm not a big movie person, oh, so man. Man, I'm sorry. No, so you know what? So so what I'm saying is a lot what I recognize is a lot of people are NPCs. Um and I say that Okay, I know what that is. Okay. Right. So it's just inside of this construct, most people are not unlearning and deprogramming themselves. So when you've done when you talk about finding your tribe, when you've done the internal work you start to see through a lot of propaganda immediately as, it, immediately as it comes on. Like even like my mom, who I love, like now she just started kind of like seeing through it. I'm like, she's watching the news and you just see, seeing all this propaganda. I'm like, Ma, I, I literally cannot watch mainstream news without seeing or hearing through it. So it's like most people, it's just this programming that they're not willing to right. unlearn. So those of mm. us who have taken the time to unlearn, do the in-depth research, it's almost like, well, how can you say that when they've literally thrown this at you so many times and I'm coming in saying, well, this is wrong. I don't care what degree he has or right. she has. This is wrong. So I, I think doing the the part when you are where you are unlearning, it's off putting to people because they match everything with propaganda and mainstream right. news. Well, so, and, and cognitive. Cognitive dissonance is not comfortable. Uh, but I, let me ask you a question, right? So you're saying that you have to go through this process. You have to do the unlearning. But do you feel like yeah. that it's, is it all nurture? Is it all just this process that you're, or is there something that's <clears throat> nature? Right? Do you feel like maybe you were born um, with a certain position, a certain attitude? I mean, you're an artist, but it's not even uh, plenty of the art world has gotten sucked into this propaganda, too. So I don't even think that's it. But sometimes it's really hard for me to put my finger on. I'm like, what is it like? What is it that makes me different? What is it that made me be the teacher who was like, yo, guys, like, uh, are you seeing what I'm seeing behind these yeah, computers? Yeah, right, right, right. You, know, you, know, you, you guys don't feel that? Or you guys don't see through that. There's so many times I've been in conversations that way or uh, people are watching or hearing or talking about like mainstream propaganda. And I just like, I can't believe it. Um, I, I think I think it's both, though. I think there's a part that's innate. And I think there's a part of it that's doing the work. Like even when I was younger and I was, you know, we I grew up in a Christian household. And there was just ways that me, I always talk about like love. Uh, it's one of my main ways of learning. I remember like my youth leader, when I put out this album, no cursing, no nothing, just just romantic love in the most healthiest way. And she was like, you know, this is not, you know, uh, glorifying God and sat down with me. And I almost got like um, scolded for it in a way. And it was my first um, time where I kind of started saying, OK, where people are programmed in a way um, where everything has to be linear. Um, and I was like, I, I have to be able to talk about my challenges in a way that, yeah, it's glorifying God, but as well as it's able for me to be able to be my unfiltered self and talk about my life in a way that is honest. Behind closed doors, I'm the same way I am in public. I don't want to carry this perfection facade. So I say that to say, even when I was younger, there was still this process of me thinking for myself and doing things outside of the box. So I do think in a way our experiences younger shape us. And I do think it's this intrinsic 
value that we have that we're born with in a way, but you have to water it. Because some people okay. do have that Epi- in the, epi- they don't epi- water epigenic. it. Hmm? Right. It's e- epigenic. So that means that it is both nature and nurture, like some some crossroads between yeah, both, sure. right? Sure. You know, it, like you said, you were saying you have to water it. So I think I think that is right. Yeah. Um, it, it, and I've been saying something similar lately. I've been saying, okay, you have to take a, what you're good at, right? What you're passionate about. And, and sometimes that's really hard to align, I think. Trying to align what you're good mm-hmm. at and what you're passionate about mm-hmm. is... I think that's probably one of the most difficult things in the world, right? Because you can be good at things that really don't have a lot of value. You can be passionate about things that you're not very good at, or you can be passionate about things that you're good at. But again, it's like, and then I guess the third part is like, okay, I have my passion. I have what I'm good about, good at. Okay. How does that fit into the world? Right. Mm. Um, So it's definitely being able to put all three of those things together. Um, That's a world within itself. Yeah, for sure. So that I think that's another thing. Again, these last two years, it's been so much dark, so much dark, but I do feel like there's been light. You know, I really do feel like I've been able to uh, come into my element. Mm. I I feel like, you know, I, I have a tendency to get into trouble a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, not like huge, huge trouble. I wouldn't say not, not malicious kinds mm-hmm. of things. Just, uh, you know, pushing the line a little bit, experimenting, you know, when you're a kid, you like to drink and try other things or whatever, stay out too late and, you know, maybe throw a couple big parties at your parents' house when they're not there, mm. uh, things like that. Um, so it's it's definitely, I, I definitely had a tendency to do those types of things. And now I feel like all of those things were kind of preparation for this moment. Sure preparation for like this ultimate time that I have to stand up and say, no, like I'm not going to follow your rules. Yeah. You cannot pay me enough to follow your rules. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I gave up, I mean, I gave up my teaching salary. It's not millions i mean i guess it, it technically is like if i, mean, I went to my, and, and my to like it would have been a million over millions of dollars if uh you know i saw my career the whole way through and collected my pension and all that but um mm-hmm. you know so i, I definitely you feel like that's, that's nothing light though i commend you because that's your livelihood you know not many and, and even with a lot of people that do know uh, and have been the unlearning and see through the programming. A lot of people t- have stayed on the other side because of solely off of their livelihood, which is another reason when you go back to no judging. I have to understand that because not everybody has the flexibility or luxury to say, well, you know what? Forget this job and I'm going to stand for this. Even though yeah. you want to. I even question in the middle of like 2021 and 2020, like why aren't more people that do have the brand and the name saying something like this is crazy like you have like all of these you know there's a a concert they had roll up your sleeves and it was just like like i get it you're advocating for something but it was just like everything was in your face to push this vaccination and i'm like why are more people speaking about the other side or they have a platform where a lot of people are connected to a system where they have these endorsements they don't want to lose so going against a mainstream narrative like that is their livelihood or even on a smaller scale People that provide for their kids or families are like, man, I, I see through this and I want to make my own decisions and, and, and have my individuality for my health freedoms. But at the same time, this is my livelihood. There's so many people that I know personally like, man, I had to get it for my job. I know. I know. You know it's people- definitely hard for me to understand. I'm like, did you have to get it, though? You know, because I'm like, I made yeah. that decision. I made that yeah, decision yeah. to get it. Up. But I, I, I at the same time you're right. Like you, you can't, you have to let that judgment go. Yeah. Um, I, I literally have to remove myself and go. I, I say to you, I don't feel like you had to, but I do want understand where you're coming from because right. I, I'm not, I don't have the funds to give you the, but like, don't worry about it. You can leave your job. So you, for, it's your livelihood. So I get it. 
I know. And that's, you know, what really gets me though, is like, not the regular people. It's, it's who you're talking about. It's the people who, uh, who have big money, you know, Mm -hmm. and you know, it makes me think, well, how big is your money? You know, like Mm -hmm. what's the point of having all that money, right? If the point of have all that money is to be free and you have all that money and you're not free, you know, and basically your agent is kind of controlling you and your endorsement dealers are controlling you. And, you know, like I definitely understand the traditional line of you want to separate business and politics. Like what did Michael Jordan say? He said, um, both Republicans and Democrats buy Jordans, right? Something to that effect. (laughs) Right. So I get it in normal times. Like I get it. But I think when they when they take what's normal and they start trying to make that you standing on normality, a political statement, you know, we we have to stand on normality. We can't allow them to do that. But especially, you know, I'm just I am almost glad I don't have all that money. It seems <laughs> like it's less freedom no, than no, I have. No. I, I truly believe in building generational wealth, but I, I think you, you it's the most liberating thing when you're not when you're not connected to if I say this, then I lose this. Because most people, it's the money, but it's also damaging a brand. And a lot of people don't want brands tainted. So if you can figure out a way, that's why, you know, there's a lot of artists that I look up to that are, you know, when you're independent. You know, if right. you find, like even with my what I'm building and getting these sponsorships and building with people that you, you don't have to think like me, but you just have to respect where I'm going and give me that creative freedom. When you're independent, you can say things that you somebody else may not be able to say in your position, but you don't get any backlash for it. You know where I stand on already. But when you're taking a certain deal from major corporations, there's been people that have lost endorsements off of an allegation. You know, so nevertheless of something you're actually saying um, that you believe in. So a lot of people like, you know, I'd rather stay silent just because, you know, I don't I don't want my brand to be tainted. So I, I definitely believe in building wealth. That's one of the things I'm, I'm going for and I'm shooting for. But I, I want to do it in a way that's independent, where I can still be myself and my light not be you know diluted. Yeah. And that's definitely one thing that, again, this these past two years have shown me is that I don't need the system. I don't need a plan. I, all I need is just my faith and, and to believe in myself, right? My faith in God and my faith in myself. I know that if you put me anywhere, mm-hmm. anytime, I feel like I can figure it out. I I can make sure that, you know, I, I'm paying my bills. My son's getting, you know, the food that he needs. And we might not be having a luxurious lifestyle. I mean, my son definitely had to, and we're still still not probably back to the same, um, you know, uh, lifestyle, um, comfortability, I guess, in terms of just like, you know, money cushion um, that we were. But mm. we made it happen. Like, and, and, and also, you know, I got to give a big shout out to, to my family. You know, they were definitely supportive. They were there for me. I always have. So that's super, that's another part of like the generational wealth piece too, is like, um, you know, you don't need to have tens of millions of dollars to have generational wealth. You know, Mm -hmm. what you need to have is like, you know, money matters. Like you, you, I want, I want to have like a good bank account. Right. And you should have it in good assets. But I think it's also just about having that family network, like something cool that my family does is like um, is with the cars. Right. When somebody gets a new car, we'll sell the other cars to the other people in the family. So Mm. my dad just got a car. And so then my mom took his car and then my sister took my mom's car and then I took my sister's car. So we all got. Yeah, we all got a newer car. Um, But only one person had to really buy the new car. And then the other ones we just like sell to each other for like a dollar and then I'll sell, you know, I had a, I had the oldest car, so we'll sell that. And then, you know, I'll give that money to my sister for her car. Gotcha. That's dope. Yeah, that's exactly. Genius. And so that. that's like, that's generational wealth right there is like, th- that's how you build. Yeah. And I think a lot of people too, um, I don't know if I'm going off on a tangent, but uh, a lot of people think like ha- having a million dollars is, you know, a million dollars is not a lot. But if you break it down, like what's your I remember my mentor asked me, like, what's your number? 
Like, what do you mean, what's your number? He's like, what's your what's your number for like freedom, um, financial freedom? And I had to really start writing certain things down. So it's like for me, like yeah. in a space of like, okay, now I right, there's the ideal number, and there's now just like being able to pay bills and still have a little bit more to kind of enjoy myself. So I'm always like, if you have, and this is a lot, but it's just saying everybody talks about millions and millions, but what if you just had five hundred thousand? Five hundred thousand dollars a year, you're making forty thousand dollars a month, ten thousand dollars a week. You know, so I always I'm kind of out of the loop of like, yeah, million, multi-millions would be great. You got to build something that outlives yourself, be it in stocks and assets or be it in something like you're doing or be it in a business that outlives you. But if you have a number and you're able to identify what is your thing and how you live that builds financial freedom, that's ideal because you don't always have to have a million dollars or multi-million dollars to have financial liberty. Like my lifestyle is a luxurious minimalist. I've identified that. Like, I like luxury and I like rooftops and I enjoy these amazing dinners, but I also enjoy just being at the park and just cooling in my space and it doesn't need to be this mansion. So, you know, it's just identifying what's in your personality that allows you the number that's in your head to manifest that. And it's not always, some people it is. If that's your, listen, if it's multi millions, that's your number. But I always say to like my mentees, like, make sure you, you identify and unpack what's your number that's going to get you to have financial freedom. Yeah. And I think another important thing to, to bring into that uh, equation is freedom versus comfortability. I think a lot of times we think about freedom in terms of comfortability, right? Like in terms of luxury, which is again, like I'm not judging anybody for having some luxurious taste. It's nice to have nice things, especially if that's a thing that you're super into and value. Like I know a lot of guys are super into cars, like cool, like get a sweet ass car if that's like your thing, you know, yeah. like my, for my parents, um, they're sailors. Like that's always what mm. they invested their time and money into is like, you know, we didn't go out to eat we didn't you know get nice clothes like we had a nice sailboat and we went on trips and you know that was that was our thing so yeah. um i i think yeah a lot of times we just we're into this mindset again of like oh well it's just easier to show my vaccine card you know oh it's just you know it's just easier to just take the test it's just it's just easier to like you know listen to the news and um and you know, I, I collect my money and I get to hang out with my friends. Like, isn't this a sweet life, you know? And, mm -hmm. and that's true. But at what point, again, if you, if you think about like the WEF, they're like, you're going to own nothing and you're going to like it because yeah. they're going to have just so comfortable and they're going to, and, and then the drugs too. I think about America and how many drugs that we have. I think that's a big issue for, in terms of like a, a, a turning point, if we're talking about, you know, reaching that kind of level, that tipping point where enough people are going to wake up and stuff. I think that uh, one of the issues that we have here in America is so many people are on prescription pills and like the fentanyl now and, and the food. So many people are addicted to food. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's definitely something that I'm constantly thinking about is freedom versus comfortability, right? Okay, I can buy this thing and chill and feel comfortable. But is that really freedom or is freedom grinding and sweating and like, you know, farming on my homestead or something? Yeah, 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 I agree. I remember this, uh, this artist I was with in the studio um, when this whole thing was like in the... Um, the epicenter of, of the whole mandates. Yeah. And I was like, he's like, bro, did you get it? And I was like, no, I, I, I didn't get it. And then I asked him, like, did you get it? He's like, yeah, man, I, I want to travel. And I was like, bro, like, I'm not mad at you getting it for that. I was like, but that's the reason? He's like, yeah, bro, I, I, I want to travel. And I was like, did you know that it's still in clinical trials until 2023? I was like, you're literally indirectly participating in a clinical trial. You don't even know it. And I was like, this thing still has a ton of side effects. I was like, you don't even know Pfizer had the worst, the criminal, the biggest criminal medical. Um, yeah, this, payout, right? Medical, uh, payout. Yeah, two, it, it's no, two point one billion dollars in 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 injuries. And so, pocket lawsuit, yeah. criminal lawsuit. That's the word I'm looking for. Criminal, biggest criminal lawsuit in his medical history. And I'm like, these are the things. But he had, he's like, there's no way. He's like, bro, like for not Pfizer. I'm like, these are the, and this is like surface level information 
Oh, any, yeah, that's like super easy. Like you could search that up; it'll come up on yeah, Google. I'm, like the first. I, I go in that, I'm like just that in itself, and um, he was just shocked and he was concerned. And I was like, I'm not doing it to concern you. I was just like, I think a lot of people they they just look at kind of what you're saying in terms of just let me make this decision just because I, I want to travel or it's just easier to just take this. It's just easier to do. But it's like, what is the root of why you're being forced or pushed to do this? Is it a genuine worry about your health? Which personally, I've never seen America worry about anybody's health. And now <laughs> all of a sudden they just want everybody to be healthy. Um, and it's just those questions that you got to ask yourself, like, who cares about you the most? Even like for medical doctors, like there's a lot of medical doctors. When I step into the office, I, we have respectful conversations, but they shut down and they get disrespectful because I ask certain questions. Like they don't even have a lot of them in their schooling. They have little to no hours of nutrition. So it's like right. the thing that allows you to heal, you know, in terms of vitamins and food, they're just, we live in a system, especially in America. Western society lives in a system of pill to symptom infrastructure, which is like, you feel this, here's this pill. They don't even ask you about what's your nutrition, what do you eat like, what's your sleep like, what are your, what are your habits, what's causing, you know, um, stress. So when I go to somebody and they have little to no nutrition and they're advising you should get this shot, why not? Who are you being advised by? And why are you saying it? So it's like, it's just like parroting of this propaganda that's coming even in health office, because even people I've talked to, I'm under a lot of like some of my greatest mentors are like chiropractors and functional medicine doctors. Then you right. go to like Western medicine doctors and my friends are like, but my doctor said it's fine. And that's the biggest battle because you'll say the reasons why to just question it and challenge it and look underneath the surface. And they'll say, but my doctor said it. And this white right. has become this like God complex. And I'm like, I don't care what degree you have, I'm gonna question you. And it's gonna be uh, in-depth questioning that is, it, it's a conversation, let's have a conversation. But most doctors, when they do meet people that do critically think, they don't wanna have a conversation because they don't know themselves, majority of them. Right. So that's the difference between like, when I tell people a lot of doctors are indoctrinated and then you have the anomalies that are educated. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to switch gears, though, a little bit. I want to talk about your art yeah, and, and what you do as an artist, um, you know, a poet, a songwriter. So, of course, you you put together shows and you put together venues um, mm -hmm. and spaces. But what about you? Like, are you working on any projects right now? Um, you know, have you done anything lately? Maybe you could give us like a little taste of something. Like um, yeah, sure. I'm um, I'm working now on, honestly, a college tour. Um, I know a lot of like my core fan base wants me to put out an album because how I started doing spoken word is, uh, you know, like I said, I grew up in the church. So growing up, I rap first and then. And mm -hmm. so that's. It's OK. I'm sorry. I like this spell. No, I'm sorry. No, Keep going. Can. Um, So I rap, sing. um, And then, you know, music came first. And then I went to a a, a church retreat. This is when I was like maybe 2007. And then I okay. remember signing up for the talent night. And I went up, I had this rap written out, and then they had a band behind me. They're like, you know, Luke Olivier, come up. Went up, you know, and then I was like, yo, I need a beat. And they're like, oh, we don't like, we don't have a beat. And a lot of the musicians already had sat down. Um, so they had the instruments there, but they didn't have the the, the band. And and somebody was like, yo, just do it a cappella. So I ended up doing the rap acapella and I got a standing ovation. Okay. And I was like, oh, snap. And then somebody came up to me after, man, like, bro, that was amazing. Um, and I was like, yeah, man, like, that was my rap. He's like, yeah, that was poetry. And I was like, nah, I don't do poetry. Like, that was rap. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, nah, bro, this is, that's poetry. Like, what you just did, when you take away and strip the beat and just deliver it the way you did, that was poetry. And, I, and that's literally... You know what started it for me, like oh snap! Like, I you're, like, you're like nah, nah. I was like nah, that's not, I, don't, I, was like, nah, I don't do poetry, bro. I was like I was right, and I was, yeah, right. And it's like no, this is this is this is poetry in its purest form. That's so why I would say the acronym for rap is written in poetry because when you strip it down, people used to just get in a cipher. 
you know, circle around each other. Somebody did a beat or without a beat and you just spit your lyrics. So at the right. at the core service is poetry. So obviously I do, you know, I do music, um, I rap, I sing beats, but also the core foundation of what I do has grown and evolved into spoken word poetry. So Okay. Yeah. You give it you want to give us like a little taste? Do you remember any of that sure. first rap or you got something yeah. like recently that you're into? Um yeah, I I I'll spit out a, a bit of a piece called Intuition. Um Okay. So yeah, I've been in my event curating bag as far as of late, so if I mess up, forgive me. All right, here oh, we go. No. Um, this is intuition. This is for the dreamers who dream wide awake. Late nights and early mornings consistently molding your plan A. While ignoring a world that whispers, we understand your ambition, but not having a plan B isn't safe. Well, I've never known being safe to be synonymous with legendary. Matter of fact, mama told me risk everything but your integrity. Be intentional. Stay light on your feet. Get purpose heavy. I've seen the most financially successful men fall victim to spiritual poverty. Maybe that's the reason I commend the ones who've learned balance and honesty. Who can monetize ideas whilst they're radiating, radiating positive frequencies. I fear a world where the only motive to win is to receive public validation just to mass insecurities, I wonder. An earth where virtual living outweighs reality. Where the effectiveness of your social media defines a human equity, I think we do today's tomorrow a disservice if we allow high numbers of followers and likes to gain more stock than good character and uncompromising integrity. Too many carbon copies being awarded for mediocrity. Everyone sounds and looks the same. How does that inspire future Teslas and Einsteins? To the teachers who confuse creativity for rebellion who didn't understand we need the better lesson plans, not more pink slips to detention. It's a distorted system. When kids with revolutionary potential get overlooked and diluted by standardized testing, we free thinkers declare war on this game of loans. It's a big business. A degree shouldn't be synonymous with a debt sentence. I just thank God for spiritual knowledge. You know, I've never had to pay the intuition. This is simply the product of an old school, hardworking Caribbean father. Fused with an intelligent nurse of a praying mother who told me, son, if you ever go broke, you're forever wealthy in affirmation. The word if doesn't exist in your vocabulary. She said, matter of fact, using if in this household is blasphemy. It's a sign of uncertainty. Believe in the power of energy. Whatever you say after I am becomes your destiny. So this, this is for the dreamers who dream wide awake. Late nights and early mornings consistently molding your plan A while ignoring a world that screams, we understand your ambition, but not having a plan B isn't safe. Matter of fact, I heard the richest place in the world is a cemetery. Rich ideas aborted by doubt, murdered at infancy. What an awakening day when the world realizes it's not only flesh that decays inside of these coffins, but to whomever ignored their call in his bodies and dreams buried inside of these graves. So I've never known being safe to be synonymous with legendary. Being unapologetically yourself, that's legendary. Peace. That's that piece. Awesome. That was amazing. Okay. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah that it's piece I haven't performed it in a little bit, but yeah. Okay. All right. So you're getting on the stage on the 30th, though. On the 30th is uh, our show, Spoken Word Show, Summer Day Party. Um, okay. It's the 30th, 5 to 9 p.m. in Bushwick, Brooklyn. All right. Well, okay. It's still, okay. It's in the, it's in the evening. All right. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see what my day is like. I can't make any promises, but cause I got two parties up in the Bronx, as I was telling you, but I would love to come out. I'd love to see you perform. You know, I used sure. to do a little rap and a little poetry back in the day, like I was telling you. <laughs> so, um, you got to give uh, the definitely people something. Be I'm sorry. You got to give the people something. Like, you got to give the people something. If you come, <laughs> you're more than welcome to write something. Time and to give the people yeah, yeah, nah, for sure. You know, I'll pull out one of my old raps. I was thinking of some, I said some line that just came to me today. I was like, I'm on my Africa bombada, 90 baby, 90s baby born. I'm the game's granddaughter. 
I forget what comes after Love that. that. But it was just it came to me today. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta just keep writing. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, like I would I used to write all the time. Just like right now, I'm just like doing so much between, you know, the 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 political stuff. I'm doing a lot of video content creation right now. Like I said, I just came out with that yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. I am an anti-masker. Mm -hmm um you know but my boy has a studio here and like i'll go there every once in a while and just like you know get on the mic have fun uh oh. freestyle you know we'll pull up old songs and be like oh remember this one uh, you know so, uh things yeah, like that no, no, so. no. all right well i, I appreciate you too, like, it's hmm? no no go ahead i don't know if it, oh no i was just gonna say I was, to add on to what you're saying i think even if somebody's not an artist I think we're all artists in our own way though. But even if you're not a poetic or musical artist, I think I still think it's just necessary to just write creatively. Be it whatever's on your mind or in your soul, just write. It's an it's a it's a it's a really freeing um outlet of expression. So I always tell anyone, even if you're an artist or not, just write ideas out and don't think, just write. And a lot of times your your spirit and your soul will kind of will take over and do the rest. Yeah, whatever it is, writing, singing, you know, getting out there. I was noticing with my son, you know, he he loves the video games, but in the morning I won't let him play until like after seven o'clock. At least he has to wait because he wait he'll wake up early, you know. So, mm -hmm. but when I don't let him play, he goes and he plays with his toys and his action figures, and he's like, yeah, like, oh, like whatever the car it's a lamborghini or whatever superman's right you know they all fighting and he's having this like amazing time and he's like so into it. i'm like isn't this so much more fun than the video games like the video games you sit there like, you know like right. and he just like starts cracking up dying laughing he's like yeah you are kind of right and then he's like is it seven o'clock yet like can i play video games? <laughs> i just it is, it's so much more fulfilling um he's only six he oh, likes man. to play that. he yeah, likes to play he likes to play Fortnite, so he yeah i mean i'm not a big video gamer but he whatever he i let him play a little bit yeah and and, and he'll he'll probably either grow out of it or or just keep playing it but that's that age right hopefully yeah you got to set the you got to set the boundaries and stuff but i just even for myself like you know i can sit there and i can scroll and scroll and scroll but when i actually read a book when i actually write something when i actually go out for a walk when i'm actually engaging with people i just feel so much more fulfilled and Absolutely. i really think that that's the key is that we I, i'm not you know i like social media i love connecting with people like this but it's we have to you know, we have to have a balance. We can't let the algorithms control us. We can't let the comfort control us. You know, freedom is really about that discipline and doing those things that you want to do when you don't really want to do them. And it's just about, I'll add on lastly, it's about human connection. Because mm. a lot of times, even the, some of the conversations and debates we'll get onto online, I call it keyboard wars, which I don't do. I won't get into a keyboard war with somebody. But some of the most productive conversations with people that think totally opposite of me have been extremely healthy and productive in person. So, yes, yeah, social media is great because I can touch somebody I would never have come into contact with. Right. It's amazing to have these these necessary conversations in person because at the end of them, usually they're handled with grace and you have a better understanding of the either the other's perspective in a way that's not just like most people just get into conversations to protect their stance instead of really understand. But I feel like in person, you're able to kind of have that dialogue. And at the end, it's like, oh, even right, if I don't- read, More than I words, because you have more than words. You know, on a computer screen, it's really hard to send your like vibrations, right? But yeah. when you're in a room, when you're in a space, when you're with somebody, you can feel those vibes. Like when I used to do a lot of um like online dating and stuff, and then you like go and meet people in person, I would know right away. Mm -hmm. I would know, I could like just get into a space with somebody and like feel if I was going to be like, you know, into it or not. So yeah. it's definitely that's so essential. You need those vibrations because the screen, the technology just cuts a lot of that off. I agree for sure. Awesome. Any last words you want to leave the people with here? Um, 
one, I want to thank you for having me on. Um, and finally, we got a chance. I know we've been following each other. We never got a yeah. chance to connect. So I'm happy we got a chance to connect. And um, and I probably just say lastly, just anyone who's watching, man, just spread love and and think for yourself. Be open to thinking for yourself. Um, it allows you know space for necessary, maybe difficult dialogue, but for us to kind of just see the human perspective in a different way than um, this confusing time that we're in now. So just spread more love to anyone around you in person or on social media. Yeah, I I love that, yeah. you know, and despite being over the computer, I definitely feel some good vibrations here. Looking forward to making that in-person connection. Really appreciate you yes. coming on. I know we had some scheduling things. I appreciate you, yeah. you know, being well. Yeah. And um, yeah, let's keep it going. I look forward to seeing more of your work. Definitely going to share it with all my people. If you're here, you're checking it out. Make sure you've hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll link both of our social medias down below in the description. So give us a follow and say what's up. All right, guys, stay beautiful and stay free.